Well, hello, my name is Sarah McCubbin. I'm from 10 Minute Momentum. And today I would like to talk to you about how to use a cold frame to garden year round. Now, this may be a very familiar concept or not a familiar concept, but it's one that is accessible at all budget levels for every family to try, which makes it a great option for people who have a lot of space, a little bit of space, a lot of money, a little bit of money. This is a great learning experience and it's a great just activity to keep the kids busy. So I'm excited to share with you today and let me share my screen with you so I can show you all these slides as we go. Also, you're going to get a copy of these slides. They're included with this presentation, so you don't need to take notes. They're included with as the bonus resource with this presentation. Okay, so let's begin. Today, we're going to talk about what is a cold frame. We're going to talk about how this is a life skill, right? Learning how to grow food. We're going to talk about starting seeds in a cold frame, growing food all winter in a cold frame, cold frame growing activities with kids, using a cold frame in all four seasons. Is it worth it to have a cold frame? <laughs> and then, of course, the of course, the bonus resource is a copy of these slides. So what is a cold frame, you may ask? Well, a cold frame is simply an outdoor structure or a frame that's clear and lets sunlight in while keeping plants protected from cold weather. In a typical cold frame structure, plants can be kept five to 10 degrees warmer than outdoor temperatures. In some cold climates, that might mean that the temperatures drop to sub-zero temperatures, even in a greenhouse, especially overnight. But in most parts of the world, that's not the case. In fact, one of the biggest benefits of a cold frame, not just a greenhouse, is that it keeps the weather off the plants. Many free, uh, many plants can tolerate cold temperatures, but having freezing snow and ice on them will damage the plants. And so having a cold frame will protect them from the direct harsh elements. So like I said, learning how to grow food is a life skill. You may not need to grow food, you may not want to grow food, but having a familiarity with how food comes from the ground or from animals or whatever and ends up in our kitchen on our plates is a life skill. It helps our kids appreciate those meals. It also helps them have the basic skills in case they would need to grow food one day. So this is my cold frame hoop house not pretty, but it's it's very useful. Right now it has chickens in it, so it doesn't have any food growing in it right now. But <laughs> we hope to redo the plastic in the spring and then we're gonna start growing stuff again. So I first wanted to show you three different kinds of cold frames, right? I said there's a cold frame for every budget and I do mean that. So the first kind that is free basically is a cold frame made from a milk jug. You can take a milk jug, cut it in the middle, put soil in the bottom, uh, put some holes in the bottom, and then you can tape the top to the bottom, take that cap off during the day, like if you have a really sunny day, but most of the time you're gonna leave the cap on and that lets the moisture stay inside and it builds up some heat. And this is a great way to start seeds. Obviously, you're not going to grow full size vegetables in a milk jug, but this is a great way to start seeds. And for things like lettuce, you could start them in the milk jug. And then as the weather gets nicer, it's not so cold, you could actually take the top off and you actually could grow some of those leaf lettuces in the milk jug. Okay, so that's the number one can cost no money. The second is a garden box cold frame. This can be done for no money. If you've got some extra wood and old windows laying around, it's basically a wood box, kind of like a raised bed. It's got soil inside. And then you put a clear lid 
on it to provide that warm environment. The sun comes in and it warms everything up. The soil stays warm. It keeps the soil, the, the weather off the plants. You do have to manage the temperature in there by opening it up on sunny days because you can still cook your little veggies in there. They can die if you get it too hot in the middle of winter. That's not normally a problem, but it is something you still have to pay attention to. And the third kind is a hoop house cold frame, right? These have plastic on the outside. They come in all different sizes. You can get one for, I mean, if you had scraps, you could make your own, but the plastic costs something to buy. Um, the least expensive frame with plastic is usually around a thousand dollars. Ours is 20 by 24 feet. And to buy it with the ends and plastic is probably $3,000. So the, the price point on these goes all over the place. But the point is not which one you choose or can you have the big one or do you have enough space? Remember, we're talking about life skills here where we're learning how to grow our food and what everybody has and their needs and their space and everything is different. But I just wanted to show you the three different kinds. Okay, so oh, I have the wrong title on this one, but this should say how to um, some plant projects with kids that involve a cold frame. First, here are some activities you can do with them. You can let them pick seeds out in the store or, or a catalog, right? Because just picking seeds out generates a lot of excitement. It's like new life, just the idea of what will come. First is just picking project, uh, picking seeds. And if you did watch the other video on companion plants, you can use the activities for kids in that guide along with these activities. They kind of can go together quite easily because these ones are more about planting and those ones are more about researching which plants should go together. Next, you can, I mean, this is about cold frames, but let's be realistic. Some of us live in really cold places. If you can't start growing outside, you don't have a milk jug, that just seems like too much for you, it is okay to start growing your seeds on a windowsill. I have some windowsills or on a little table that gets some sun. I like to reuse those lettuce containers. I don't know if you buy tubs of lettuce, but I like to reuse those, put a little soil in there. You have to be careful not to overwater. Or if you poke holes in the bottom, you need to put a tray underneath. So I usually <laughs> don't poke holes in them and I just let them sit there, but I'm just careful not to overwater. You can make a milk jug cold frame for seeds and greens. If you're starting seeds that are going to be planted outside, then you should start them four to eight weeks before they're going to be planted outside. Don't start stuff in January that takes only four to eight weeks because it'll be ready to go outside and it won't be warm enough. <laughs> at least in Ohio. If I start my tomatoes right now, they cannot go outside in eight weeks. It will be too cold. So make sure you plan to plant stuff in those cold frames that you will be able to plant outside at the right time. All right. Another activity you can do with kids, and this doesn't really have to do with planting, but it's more to help them understand how cold frame works. Use a thermometer and show them, use the thermometer inside a sunny window. Like if you've got a window sill, you can set that thermometer inside a sunny window and maybe you've got your thermostat somewhere else in the house, right? That temperature on the window sill is gonna be warmer than what your thermostat on the wall says in a different spot in the house. Or you can measure the temperature differences inside a car, right? On a sunny day, what is the temperature on the inside of a car versus on the outside of a car. Both of those are situations where you've got glass allowing the, the inside, the heat's building up on the inside compared to the outside. So that's just a simple activity, but it's to help kids understand why a cold frame would actually work. All right, what can I grow in a cold frame? While many plants can be started in a cold frame for growing, 
during the late fall and winter months, cold crops are generally the best choice. Okay, so you can start all kinds of seeds in a cold frame, little cold frame, big cold frame. But if you're trying to grow things through the winter, you want things to be in there that like to get cold. <laughs> so those things might be leaf lettuce, with chard, kohlrabi, scallions, parsley, radishes, spinach, kale, arugula, beets, and carrots. Basically, I mean, this is not a complete list, but basically you want cold crops, things that like to get cold. And if you look at that, it's like salad, right? Lots and lots of salad. So first you're going to choose things that you like to eat, right? You're going to, you're going to choose things that you like the best, but I always suggest trying to grow a few things that are unfamiliar, especially if you have kids, because kids will eat weird vegetables if it came out of their own yard. It's so much easier if they grow it, they'll try anything which I want my kids to be kind of adventurous eaters, willing to try things. And I have found that this is a great way to do that. All right. Now, as far as growing things in the warmer months, I have had great success growing tomatoes in my hoop house. So it's a big cold frame, but I had to make sure it didn't get too hot in there. You couldn't do that in a garden box. You couldn't do that, obviously, in a, a milk jug, but in a big hoop house, I've grown tomatoes in there in the summer months. They do amazing, the climbing kind, but I had to make sure it didn't get above like 85 or 90 degrees. All right. How can we use a cold frame in four seasons? Now I live in Ohio, so we do get the four seasons here. It's not super, super hot. It's not super, super cold. So you would have to maybe adjust these a little bit depending on where you live. All right. So in the winter, in a cold frame, you can start seeds, you can start them in the ground, or you can start them in trays. Now, keep in mind, depending on your temperatures, you might be trying to start them and it's too cold for them to germinate. So that might not be that effective. Planting them in the ground would probably be all right because they will germinate when they're ready. But if you plant them in those little seed cups, they're not gonna, they're not gonna do very well because they'll probably dry out right? If, and they're not ready to germinate. You're not going outside, but you can, in fact, start seeds in the winter. I started a lot of stuff mid-February one year. And if you had stuff you planted in the fall, you could be harvesting greens that you were start that you started in the fall. All right. In the spring, you can start more seeds again in the ground or, you know, in little seed, seed starter cups. You can harvest greens. You started in the winter and you can plant heat loving plants in a cold frame or plan to leave it open. So the cold frame box that we looked at earlier, the garden box, you actually could start tomatoes in there as long as you planned to remove the cover and you were going to let those just grow as a normal bed during, during the summer, right? Like you couldn't close them in. In the summer, in a cold frame, you can grow heat loving plants. Sorry about the typo there. In the fall, you can plant seeds for greens to be harvested in the winter, right? You can kind of look forward and say, what should be planted here that will go into the winter? All right. Is it worth it to have a cold frame? You saw that there was a price attached to all of those things. Well, obviously a milk jug costs like nothing. You might buy a little garden soil if you don't like your dirt, but you can do that one for free. One of these garden boxes, you might be able to do it for free. You can buy these, you know, ready to put together for a hundred or $200 on Amazon. And obviously the larger cold frame is a bit more of an investment. So is it worth it? Well, I guess that de depends on how you define worth, but practicing growing with a cold frame teaches valuable life skills, right? Even if you don't need to grow your own food, it's helpful to know how to. So is that worth it for you? I mean, it's definitely worth it for us. And we didn't start with something big. We had, we had a cold frame box first. It's a great winter activity. I start to go bonkers in the winter time when the kids can't get outside. So covering the table with some, you know, a tablecloth and getting out different things to plant seeds in. It's a great winter time activity. 
life science. Some of us have kids that get to the point where they don't care about schoolwork, right? Like they just don't care and nobody can make them care. If you haven't had one of those kids, lucky you. But some of us have had one of those kids. And part of the reason they don't care is that it doesn't feel relevant. It doesn't, doesn't matter. And so you can grow things with them. If you go through this process and learn about grow, learning about growing food and, you know, take it even further, they, they grow it outside, they harvest it, they learn how to preserve it, right? Like all these food skills could be part of a life sciences course. You could create a science course just for them based on their interests, which is really valuable if you have a kid that just doesn't care anymore. So this is a this is a subject or a topic that can be easily converted into credit if you need to create credit for one of your kids for junior high or high school. All right, that is about all I have for you today. There is a copy of this PDF in the bonus resources. And I hope you, um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. It gave you a few ideas, maybe of things that you could do with your family. Doesn't have to cost a lot of money. You might have some old seeds on hand. A lot of seeds will germinate for many, many years past their suggested date. We have plenty in our house. And so grab an old milk jug, cut it in half, fill it with some dirt, let your kids plant and see what happens, right? Like even if they never make it into the ground, it's still worth it for them to have the opportunity to grow some things. And if you start with greens, those grow really fast. They'll be able to eat them in like four to six weeks. And cause you can, if you get the like little leaf lettuce, you can pick those off and eat them like when they're not very big, right? It doesn't have to turn into like a huge production in order to be a valuable experience. Well, I've enjoyed being here today. I hope you learned something. Thanks so much for being here.